fuel fender tanks. Some people love them, some people hate them. But I've been asked a little, do a little something about them. These came out roughly, uh, I think in 1965. And they added about another 38 gallons per fender of fuel capacity. Pretty simple setup. There was a shutoff valve on the bottom of each tank. So if you had to service or something, you could shut her off. On these earlier tractors, they just ran rubber hose up to the front. Ran a rubber hose up each side of the transmission. There's one for the right fender. And then teed them together here in the dash. And then from there, the hose went up. Uh, fuel line went over to the front of the tank where return fuel would go in and they worked on suction if they were diesel you would have a non-vented cap on your main tank here and vented caps on the fender tanks you'd fill up your main tank fill up your fender tanks and then as it drew fuel out of this main tank of course, you draw fuel out, and if air can't come in, you build a vacuum that starts sucking the fuel out of these tanks, which at first doesn't take much vacuum because, like, even here, the top of this tank is higher than this tank. Filling them up is easy. Just take off the cap, pull it up. Now, a lot of people have seen this and wonder why thought there were two filler caps and there's not this is a dipstick to see how much fuel is in the tank let's get that back in there it's, that tank's pretty that tank's basically empty Uh, from what I've been told, the dipstick was for the gasoline engines, or powered for the gasoline powered tractors, and there is a reason for that that I'll explain here in a moment. I'm not sure how uh, Herman ended up with them uh, being a diesel tractor. His the build card shows he was uh, ordered with fender tanks. So whether that's just what they had on hand at the moment. Or uh, normally there's a pipe plug in there where the where this screws in. Or if the original tanks got damaged and had to be swapped out. But on a diesel, since you have the suction of the uh, front tank pulling fuel out, and you start with a full front tank, it just stays on full until the fender tanks get empty. And then once they're empty, your main tank starts going down and your gauge starts going down. So you don't really have to worry about the fender tanks. Your gauge just stays full until they're empty. On gasoline powered tractors, there was a selector valve right here. Uh, people often ask, what the heck is that hole for here in the back of the platform? And there was a selector valve. And what you did was you started with both the, uh, both the tanks came into that selector valve and so did the main tank up front. They all worked off from gravity. So what you did was uh, you selected your fender tanks, kept an eye on them with the dipstick. When they were getting low, you just switch this valve. The gas coming would come back from the main tank to that valve, and then another line would go forward, and you'd switch to your main tank instead of using the uh, vacuum in the tank. I'm guessing they didn't like the idea of vacuum in a gas tank, even though pretty much every car out there has it now. Now I'm sure they had problems with uh, 
rubber hoses getting kinked or collapsing. And so later on, this is the 1955, which does have tanks built into the, the cab here under each fender. Not nearly as big as the fender tanks on, on an open station. I don't recall how much, I think they're around 20 gallons each. If the same routing would be used, they'd run a steel line here, comes around, there's a T here that feeds the right tank, steel line goes up to the front. In the case of this diesel, it goes in with the return and suction pulls these tanks down. The steel lines uh, eliminated kinking and pinching and everything on rubber hoses. There's only one basic fender fuel tank. They have slotted holes, depending on whether they go on a bigger tractor like a 1750 on up or a smaller one like a 15 and a 1650. And then you could also slide them in and out, match the uh, platform, move them back and forth to depending on what your application was. There is a slight difference in the manufacturer of them depending on the year. Uh, early on, the fender tank, there's a brace that comes up behind this panel here and it stops down in here. And then later on, they move the brace up higher. And so this light bucket is, is generally called. Um, the early ones, the lights were spaced out more. Later ones, the two lights are moved over to the side because the brace comes up enough to where it interferes with that light being there. So if you're trying to piecemeal some together, that's something to watch out for. Uh, 1650s and 1550s and 55 series had single headlight buckets. And then... Uh, 1750 and larger in the 50 series had the dual headlight buckets and then you'll occasionally find one that has no lights in it and those were for cab tractors because the lights were mounted on the cab and so they had just a blank panel in here so if you got a open station tractor that has no lights in the fender tanks that's what's going on even white tractors use this same basic fender tank they had different light buckets, beauty caps, whatever you want to call them, to uh, style them more like the white tractors. But deep down inside, they're the same fender tank. An interesting note on fender tanks, you could, especially um, on 1550s and 1650s, uh, you could order a single tank have one regular fender, one fender tank fender. I've never seen a tractor equipped that way, but it is in the uh, dealer sales manual. Interesting option. If anybody's ever seen one like that, I'd love to hear about it in the comments. We can see here on Allen's 1755, the single headlight bucket, because this is a 55 series. They had uh, headlights up in the grill, and so running at Two more lights was essentially beyond the uh, wiring and, and equipment at that time. Too much draw, need a heavier duty light switch. So that is the scoop on fender tanks. Hope you enjoyed and I appreciate everybody watching. We'll see you in the next video.